Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today for another episode of Only Trams. As always, I want to start off this episode by saying thank you for all your comments on the last video, and we're going to start by exploring some of those. But first, what I want you to see are some of the changes I've made to this road junction that we put in the last episode. Thanks to a lot of your comments and a lot of the mods that were suggested, I've managed to iron out a lot of the issues we were having. We still have the issue of this tram, uh, these Georges being really slow on the uptake on the way uphill. You can see the top speed of these is actually 31 mile an hour, but they go all the way down to 10 miles an hour, or even 9 there on the way up this hill. And it does at times cause real backlogs with the other trams on the line here, because these can go a lot faster. Now, we could of course just swap those out for the same ones, but what I don't want to do is have lots of the same ones on the same line. And that's why I wanted to start this episode by addressing one of the comments from Malix. And Malix let me know that the Tatras, the T3SUs that we put in over here as passenger trams, a couple of episodes ago now I believe, these guys here, these are also available on the workshop as a cargo tram. And I hadn't seen these before, but he's absolutely correct. So that's what we're going to start off with today. And it's going to be a real quick change. We're going to click on this here. We can see at the minute we can carry 21 crude or 21 fuel, whichever is in the oil tankers at the time, and then 21 on the other kind of cargo here, which we normally just use for construction materials. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this new Tatra TS, uh, T3SU. Sorry. Now you can see here, it looks like an almost a convertible version of the one that we have already, the passenger version. But it does come in a 14 capacity and 31. It's got five separate compartments. It's electric, which is exactly what we were after, but it's also 43 miles about an hour instead of that 20 miles an hour. Uh, is it the George's 31? Sorry, so it's an extra 9 miles per hour. But we can, if we look at the tractive effort and the power here, so we've got 160 kilowatt and 20 kilonewtons. But the George is 170 and 55. So it's actually, the George has got a lot more tractive effort and, it, and, and it's got actually more 10 kilowatts. But I'm hoping that initial speed going up to it will help. And there's only one way to find out. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to spend this 1.8 million. And then I'm going to get over here and find the next tram that's going to take that hill. Next Tatra is actually already here. So we need to try and beat 9 miles per hour. As long as it's quicker than 9, we've improved. Sorry if that was a, bit, a little bit loud then. It looks like 10 was the lowest it got. So it's a very marginal increase, isn't it? But an increase is an increase and it's a new tram on the line. So let's have a look at that. That does actually look really good, I think. It looks like they've only left the roof on the front for the pantograph, otherwise the driver would be getting a suntan as well. But it's cool though, you can see the car go inside as well. Let me see if one's picked up, if there's one up here that's picked up any bricks yet. Maybe this guy here is going to pick up some bricks. Ah, there we go. There's one here. So yeah, you can see the cargo types in it. And that is actually really cool. Now I'm not sure, maybe you guys will be able to let me know, I'm not sure if these were actually used in real life in the Soviet Union as cargo trams. That's something you could let me know. But as you can see, I spent a bit of time off camera here guys, redoing this, this junction. And I've put some crash barriers up along the sides of the road all the way around this junction you'll see. And we've managed to, th this still cuts across the white line here, which I'm not really happy with, but in everywhere else, I think it's sort of, it's, it's allowed it to work now. You can see this side here looks a lot better. Really smooths in. I couldn't find any, of, even though all the mods you suggested, there you go, we're cutting the white line again here. But now we've got the crash barriers installed. I'm okay with that because we've got a little bit more road safety about. Now, these the comments on all these roads, I'm going to thank you all in a one in a, in a one here, guys, because you've all given me some cracking info, really. So Mr. Stabby uh, suggested using a mod called TFMR 2.0 modular roads. So that's been used. Um, Tony said the better roads and better roads tool and, and the road toolbox mod. I've used both of those in here. Uh, who else dropped me a comment? Wheel window. Now, this is an interesting one. Wheel window dropped me a comment basically asking what about a heritage line for the cargo trams? And I don't know how, but I hadn't even thought about that. So what I need from you guys down in the comments is some ideas on how we would work that. Because... We don't want just an empty line running up and down with no cargo. We want it to be doing something. Now, the only thing I could think realistically is we're bringing tools all the way from Slough down to this depot here. 
um, currently we're using the line that's taking the goods or that's taking the plastic up making goods and it's coming back what I was thinking is if we can bring something back else back on that line then maybe we could have the heritage cargo line coming from the depot here or near this near the museum or even, maybe even from at the end at Newark we could just run the tools straight to there and then we could have tools going into Newark and onto this line and then they could come all the way down and we just have to come past uh, past this main interchange at Louth where the passengers would get off and we'd pull away from the main line the, the main heritage line here and come down but we would share the line all the way down with the heritage passenger trains so on this route that's going all the way along the riverside and across the river here we'd have a mixture of cargo trams and um, and passenger trams now this is a bit of an issue isn't it I, th I think what I am going to do guys is I'm going to get rid of these Blackpool style trams all other than one we want to keep one so we've got one of each but this line doesn't make us any money anyway and it is only here as a heritage line we only want to try and keep one of each so that now means we've got one of each kind of tram we haven't I'm lying to you again we've got two I'll delete the one that's getting hold up it's only got one passenger on this guy picked the two up but this is the one problem we're going to have these are going to go really slow and it, it is going to make us a loss but we are at the stage now where we're making that much money that it doesn't really matter so I just want to keep an eye on this here you can see if I click the routes now everything's obeying by the rules and going up and over the intersections look a lot nicer I've tried to decorate it with some nice apple trees and some tall pines and I've put these around here and I thought we could refer to this as the, the tall pines junction I think that's a, a fitting name for this one but let me know if you have any better ideas I think I can't really can't get over how cool this does look to be honest with you but I also had a go at um, the roundabout that we put in the last episode as well because I knew that could be better um, and uh, Robly Wobbly mentioned about Mark Street back in tram pack we'll get into that one uh, probably in another video Robly actually when we start looking at putting in some more tram lines I think um, and then it was y'all's comment that said about making this roundabout bigger making the inside of it bigger so that the length of the trams could fit in between each one I believe and he's absolutely right so I completely redid this and there was a there was a comment saying that these if we're going to bridge across here on the spot it would have to be one way and of course it would I don't know why I didn't see that the first time but thanks for that guys as always your your knowledge and your advice is what's making this all work out but if I if I hit the fast forward a second here for you and let you have a look I've put bus lanes on this roundabout so that only the trams are in the outside lanes and you can see that does free up a lot more space you know, compared to the last episode you can see how much free how much more free moving everything is and the only times the trams ever get held up is here sometimes went like if you see where he's where this one wants to leave the roundabout there's sometimes a car that wants to leave and sometimes it will allow the car to go first but nine times out of ten it'll let the tram go for, actually go first and the trams seem to keep moving and then I four track this main route all the way down to Canterbury all the way down to this junction where we've got things pulling in and out and that is the only thing I've left is traffic lights here just because I, I think that makes sense because we've got things turning across two lanes there now and that makes sense to me now what I wanted to get at in this episode realistically and the main thing I wanted to look at is this main cargo hub that we've got here it's been operating for a while now it's still getting a little bit congested at times and I did notice that some platforms or there's one platform in particular here it's not getting any cargo on it and I wondered to myself why is that and then I looked and I saw that these two lines here Canterbury Grain and the, and the, the cross-country goods line which is bringing the tools down none of them are actually collecting anything they are purely dropping off here so I thought to myself to minimize congestion here could we not just put a truck stop somewhere here that's within range so they can still drop off but without coming in and causing the extra congestion so what I want to try is this modular modular station mod here and if we have a look I've had a quick flip through this to see how we're gonna do it and we can put this on a piece of road which would then allow traffic through but then I noticed if we go for this highway ramp here and we've got the one line and it's got trams on it there's no reason for anybody else to come this way so what I want to do you can see that this is connecting with the little tendrils to the side here and it's lighting up that cargo hub so this is actually in range so what I want to try and do 
is to get this cargo hull, or get this drop off point even, this truck stop here. And I want to make sure that that's in range, which it is. And then if we use the road mods that are new, brand new to us now that the guys commented on the last video with, we want an electric tram track. We'll just keep bus lanes. And then I want to come out from this junction here and connect in. Now that's saying too much slow, which I could agree with. It doesn't it doesn't look the best. I want to come off nice and flat and with as much angle that way as possible, like so. And then if we can come up and connect into here, it might take a little bit of rejigging this and a little bit of fettling about to make it work. But what I'm hoping for is something that's going to allow us to connect in here and connect into the junction just at the other side there. It says here we can adjust the pitch. What's the, ah, and that's the angle of it. So we want to be going uphill the other way, really, don't we? Because I believe this road's going uphill. It is. If I can connect in here, I want to just make sure that's connected again. It is connected up to there. And then we want the roads that we had just. We want to try and connect this in. This is going to be the issue we're having, the connection here. But there we go, that's accepted it. It's nice and smooth, up and round. That works for me. It doesn't look like it's got electrification on that though. It hasn't, so we'll put that in. We'll make sure this next bit has. And it looks like we're probably going to demolish an apple tree here. Is that connected nice and flat? It's not flat, but it's a steady increase. Now, ideally, I'd like this to connect back in after the other side here, so we're not messing with these junctions. But I believe the two lines that are going to come through, and we'll see now actually, it's so the Canterbury Grain line, if we have a look at this. So this is actually the first ever line we put in, isn't it? It is. So we're connecting fuel, uh, sorry, we're, we're collecting grain at the farm here. And then we're going to number two, which is Canterbury Transfer, and we're picking up food there. We're dropping off the grain, picking up food. And then we're dropping off the food here. So we don't want Canterbury East anymore. After the transfer, we want to go to our new stop. And then we want to get rid of Canterbury East. So now, I just want to make sure yeah, it's pulling off the main run. It'll drop off and then it'll carry on down the main run without going into that. That's exactly what we wanted. And then the other line we wanted was the cross-country goods. If we have a look at this one, Canterbury East is stop number six. Just to double check. Yes, we're only unloading here, so we're just unloading tools. So after Slough Waypoint 3, we want the new drop-off point. And all we want to do up at Upper Canterbury is load. And we don't want to stop at Canterbury East then. The waypoint... Ah, now this waypoint, guys, I didn't mention this. When I redid this roundabout, all of the routes that would normally head up north here, instead of coming in into the roundabout the way this route's going now, straight to the roundabout, around and out, for some reason, it thought the quickest way was to come down this branch and around here and then back into the roundabout. So they were actually having to wait for traffic at two sections. So I, I put this waypoint in that I think there's all of these lines here. It's mainly the main crude line going up, uh, the cross-country line and the Daryl Brexit passenger line. All the trams that come down up and down this way, and the way back I've had to go through that waypoint just to make them play the game because what was happening is the whole reason for putting this little shortcut here in was for all the trams going south. They didn't get caught up in the roundabout. But with those other trams coming this way, they were getting stopped. So it was just causing more traffic that way anyway. So it, it worked out a lot better this way in the end. So now I want to make sure... Here we go. Here's the first one with the tools dropping off. It's good to see that, actually, that when they do need to drop two, here, two off here, they can both fit without clogging up that main junction. That's something that I've got to look at. But you can see he's come straight out now not stopped anybody and off he goes and already there's not as much going on in this uh, in this actual cargo hub and we now have a spare uh, we've now a spare platform for dropping off the next thing so what I want to have a look is see if we're receiving everything in the towns down here that that hub can deliver so the Can at Canterbury here we're receiving food and fuel at Bexhill we've got tools and construction materials coming in we could do with some more that being said and now down here so we need fuel here. I don't think we've got anybody bringing fuel down to Darham, have we? We've got... So let's have a look at what's coming to this truck. So the Commat delivery. And if we have a look at this line. So at Darham South, it collects grain. So that's on the route back. Up at Canterbury East, it will only load bricks and tools. Okay. 
So it'll, it'll load bricks and tools. So maybe if we double up on that line, and on the first time round, we just copy the line exactly, but at the minute on the first line, it's picking up tools and construction materials. But then on the second time round, we tell it to pick up goods and fuel. Problem is, at the minute, we've got no goods coming down to here. Now that's an issue. How do we get goods down to here? Maybe... Are we absolutely saturated and slow yet? We haven't. Maybe this is something that's going to have to wait. What I was thinking is the trams that are bringing the tools, they could bring every other one as goods instead straight from the goods factory. We've actually got 134 goods waiting here. We're about to drop 28 off. That'll pick another 28 up. And I'm wondering whether we need to up the capacity on this line as well. How much bigger can these guys get? Because these should start making us an absolute killing. So at the minute we've got 28, which is the 4. If we went for the 6 version, that would carry 48. Let's go for it. Just before he comes in, we can pick up a full load then of these tools. I just What I do want to check is that, that new junction where they were going really slow. I want to see how that will affect us there. So what we're being held up by now is one of the passenger trains. This is probably going to be the next one that gets replaced, I believe. These trams. But again, another cool looking tram we're going to be losing. And that's another one. I think Tony said, I think it was Tony actually that mentioned it. And I'm not sure if I did this off camera or not. But let me just have a quick look. He mentioned about keeping these trams uh, looks after. That we can put the, the maintenance of that line up to... Um, the high and in that way it'll make sure i'm just wondering where i do it now i'm thinking while i'm trying to talk it um it'll make sure that these trams are looked after and they still look good um so what we want is a heritage line it's going to be manage the vehicles there we go so if we there we go if we put that up, so the running costs will go up by 50 percent i'm absolutely fine with that if it keeps our trams looking nice it looks like we've got a new lrv here low platform Let's have a look what that is in the tram depot. LRV Type B. Type LRV is used in many cities in Northern Rhine, Westphalia, I believe that is. Westphalia, Westphalia. German tram, 50 miles per hour with passengers. Now, there you go guys, we might get a double upgrade in this episode because the one that I was just telling you about, the Edgeware Louth line here, that I said could do with an upgrade. We are only running at sort of half capacity at the minute, but if we find one of these that's on its way down, which is this guy, I'm going to send him... Oh, I've just turned him around. I did not mean to do that. There we go. I'm going to send him to the Heritage Line. Good luck. Enjoy. Thank you for your service. Now, the Edgeware Louth Line. Now we've reduced that. We are going to go from currently 21 passengers to 32 each, but we have reduced the whole tram. So the total is still going to be the same. So it looks like here. Did that just change to blue because I have this line painted blue? I think it did. We've lost the original colour there, but I think that looks okay in blue, don't you guys? Without the sun glaring on it, I prefer that blue actually a little bit darker. With the, with the sun glare there, it's quite bright. We've got the name of the route on the side here which is always pretty cool. I don't know if there's any mods that allow you to get these signage on the tram to change to the next stop. It looks like it is articulated in the middle somewhere there. Tato left me a comment after the last episode because I couldn't get the word out of my mouth what I was thinking for the... I was thinking of bendy buses with the articulated section at the minute. In the middle of them, sorry, but... This really looks like we're starting to hit the modern era to me now. What do you think, guys? This looks like a modern era tram to me. I wouldn't be surprised to go into some European capital cities these days and see something very similar to these. I wonder if that... I can't remember on that information in there, did it tell us the year that these were produced from? From 1966. So we are, we are sort of getting there now. I'm forgetting that we're actually up to 1973 already. It's not going to be long before we've got the Bombardier trams flying around here. We better start making some big improvements onto the way that we're going here and see exactly, start planning what we want to do. But I think, guys, for this episode, we're already approaching that time mark. I was hoping to get a little bit more done, but it just means that we'll get more in the next episode.
Um, so I think I'm probably going to sit here and film the next episode now. So you, come, I mean, coming up, I have got to work away for a couple of weeks. So I am going to have to record a few videos up front. So and you know that I normally leave my recording to the last minute so I can address the comments at the start. But for the next probably three weeks to a month or so, it's probably going to be a couple of videos later when I address the comments that you put on each one. But don't let that dishearten you and please do keep giving me the advice because chances are when you see these things, I won't. I can be a, an idiot like that. I don't, I don't see the things that are right in front of me. And you wouldn't realise how hard it is and how much different it is to see it. Oh, hang on a minute. What's he doing here? Lottie Wilson's got onto here. Now, that is a problem. And that's got to be because we put this here. Yeah, look, people are coming this way. How? Where are they getting? Oh, they must be getting off. I wonder if she turns here and gets in, into Slough that way. I don't think there's a way off at this end. No, there isn't. So she must come down here. Yeah, look, they're getting off here. Oh, dear. The only thing I can think is to make that road one way. Well, now we have got a problem, haven't we? I'm not sure how we turn that off. I wonder if I... If I can upgrade that, upgrade that bit of tram track. Player ownership, yes. Does that stop traffic going on it? I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure if that means nobody else can go on it. I hope it does. No, look, somebody's just got on it again. Oh dear. Um, right, how do we deal with this now then? I'll have, I'll have to have a look at that off camera, guys, because we definitely don't want this. I don't want these guys. I'm wondering whether that one of those new tram mods actually will do it. To enable bus and tram track. So possibly not, because if buses can drive it on, on it, then I, I'm i pretty sure it is a road. After all the decorating I did here as well, that's a problem. What we might have to do is actually just delete that connect. We might just have to delete this. And then every time we want to put a tram on, they'll have to come this way. Because the, a tram could get on here. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Let me do it now while I think about it. I've just had the idea, and that'll make it work, so we'll do it. So we'll go for electric. We don't want a tram track. We just want to upgrade, the, upgrade this medium road all the way back to where we've already got tram track, which is here. So if I electrify this through the town, there is now a route for trams to get through this station and down here and in and what I might just do is put a line down here actually just so they can avoid that main station and not whenever we send something here it's not going to there we go he's connected yeah so whenever we send a tram there it can come in and down here and across and not disrupt the main centre of the town but I was not expecting to see that little little Robin Reliant by the look oh no it's not a Robin Reliant I thought it was the Elboy's car for a minute there but right, guys, yeah, I'm going to leave that here for this episode. Um, as I said, it, we, we might start having a sort of a staggered delay between your comments and what I can see because I'm not going to have access to my computer. But probably, I think it's three weeks, but probably more like a month all said, I've done, all said and done um, from next weekend, that is. So I'm going to try and get a few videos lined up. It'll probably go down to one a week instead of the usual two a week, one of each series that you're used to. So I do apologise for that, but... It is out of my hands, unfortunately. I've got to go and stay away and do some training for my job. Um, but as soon as we're back, we'll all be back up and running and back to normal. So I appreciate you sticking around and bearing with me while all that happens. Let's have a look at this. These original trams really are causing us a problem, aren't they? <laughs> Graphic-wise. And we're always going to have when there's one of these. All the passengers go onto the first one and nobody gets onto the second one. But I suppose that is what it is and we can't do anything about that. There we go, guys. Thanks for joining me again for another episode, and I'll catch you in the next one.